Our grape is Limburger, also known as Blaufrankisch in Europe. It's a dark-skinned red wine grape, a warm climate grape that exhibits early bud break and late ripening. The grape is typically rich in tannin and has a spicy character. It can grow in most soils, but prefers slate, loam, or chalky loam. The vines are vigorous and must be strictly pruned to control yields. The primary objective of our project was to investigate the impact of tannin additions to wine must on final wine quality. A wine lacking proper tannin structure will taste thin. It's important that the winemaker determine whether the tannin extracted during fermentation and maceration is sufficient to produce a properly balanced wine or whether additional tannin should be added. Here we present a comparison. The grapes were picked at the Cornell University Lansing Vineyards. The vineyard sits on a west-facing slope overlooking Cayuga Lake. The temperature and precipitation up until a month before our harvest date promised a good vintage. Unfortunately, October was a very rainy month. The grapes developed rot and failed to completely ripen. Sugar concentrations rose very slowly during the weeks before harvest. Bricks rose by only one degree during the month before harvest, rather than the expected long-term average of one degree bricks increase per week. We harvested the fruit on September 29th, gathering 111 pounds from three blocks in 12 lugs. We did suffer one casualty during harvest as Ben pruned a finger, luckily his own, rather than a vine in a final overzealous clip. The fruit was stored at minus 0.8 degrees Celsius for three days, when we then destemmed and crushed and moved the must to three separate tanks. The first tank held the pre-fermentation tannin-treated sample. The second tank held a yet-to-be-produced post-fermentation tannin-treated sample. And the third tank held the untreated control. Rainy weather continued that day with Yunting volunteering for the soggy cleanup duty. We then inoculated each tank with Kloss, a yeast strain noted for its ability to enhance aromatic complexity, structure, and mouthfeel, and its com compatibility with our planned malolactic fermentation. Given our measured low sugar level, we also chaptalized with cane sugar in an attempt to raise bricks to produce a 12% ethanol by volume wine. Sadly, our calculations were sabotaged by a faulty bricks ethanol conversion calculator, leaving us woefully short of our final alcohol target. The following day, we added FT Rouge Soft tannin treatment to the pre-fermentation treatment tank, and for several days thereafter, took samples of the treated sample and the control sample, sending those samples off to ETS for tannin analysis. Fermentation proceeded quickly, completing in about a week after inoculation. We punched down the must at least daily throughout fermentation and topping off the tanks with CO2. We pressed each wine in the basket press on October 17th, combining the control tank with the treated tank. Two days later, we inoculated both tanks with alpha lactic acid bacteria to commence malolactic fermentation. Visual observations led us to believe that malolactic fermentation was progressing. The wines remained in tank until November the 14th when, based on ETS analysis that malolactic fermentation had indeed successfully completed, we racked off the leaves to new tanks. ETS also reported low SO2 concentrations, so on November the 16th, we added 1.0 molecular SO2 to each tank in the form of KMBS. Our final processing step was to reduce tank temperatures to approximately zero degrees Celsius to help settle out tartrate crystals. We now present the results of our comparison. We collected samples throughout the fermentation and maceration period to track the extraction of tannin compounds and anthocyanins. The development of pigmentation of the wine is mostly complete by the third or fourth day, as can be seen in this image showing samples from the first four days. The samples are no longer visually distinguishable after day four. This result is, is consistent with the concentration of total anthocyanin reported by ETS and shown on the graph in red. The blue curve shows the concentration of total tannins over the maceration period reported by ETS. The apparent increase in tannin at the end of fermentation is likely attributable to the customary formation of poly polymeric phenolic compounds resulting from increased extraction of catechins and epicatechins from skin and seed closer to the end of fermentation. 
The general trend is that the total tannin and anthocyanin concentrations rise sharply from near zero at the beginning of fermentation and slow to saturation levels by mid-fermentation. We also note the strong correlation between tannin and anthocyanin concentrations, especially during the first half of fermentation. Finally, the pH of the treated wine is 0.11 higher than that of the untreated wine, likely due to increased extraction of potassium ions in the more extracted treated wine. The treated sample has significantly greater tannin and anthocyanin extraction, and thus acquired greater complexity, although both wines lack body due to low ethanol content. The treated wine and untreated wine should be clearly distinguishable during a discriminatory sensory test.